You know, I was mentioning in one of my previous videos about how Samsung had been trying for some time to counteract the Chinese Android phone invasion, implying that these older generation smartphones were not really that great. I was, of course, referring to phones like this one, the Allview A5 Easy. Yeah, I know, it's a budget phone. It was cheap, affordable, durable and sort of reliable. Alas, not only was it cheap, it really felt cheap and it did not reach a level of success sought after by its parent company. At least that's what I think. But let's not get bogged down in preconceived ideas and notions. Instead, we shall check out what this phone has to offer and answer a rather unnecessary question, whether it has some quirky factor or a desirability nostalgia thing from a collector's point of view. But first of all, I should get to cleaning this device. I was keeping it in its original um, shape and condition for authenticity's sake. And then we'll do a sh short unboxing. So I just have a lovely lady on a bottle of rubbing cleaning alcohol here and a piece of cloth. So let's just let her do her thing and see if we can clean this phone just like this. Sorry if I move my hands too quickly. Just a bit of rubbing alcohol. And let's see what happens when we clean the Allview, P, Allview A5 Easy. So yeah, it's actually a phone in a good working condition. It was just, it was kept um, dusty in a sort of disarray for a couple of years so it looked really worse than it actually was so there we are it's pretty nice and clean a few marks and scratches but nothing serious and also the screen protector seems to be the screen well, I wouldn't call it glass because it's plastic, but you get the idea. The screen top is a bit of a scuff here, but nothing really serious. And now for the unboxing, or rather the box itself. It looks like this. And it's called the A5 Easy 3G Dual SIM Phone. And I must say, uh, the box itself, while it feels nice and sturdy and solid, here are a few specifications. Of course, this being a Chinese-made phone, it's a dual SIM. They prided themselves with that, the Chinese uh, marketing people from the mobile industry. They always offered a dual SIM phone. And this one is actually dual SIM and dual standby. So that means that you can use both sims simultaneously. Now let me just put the cap on this rubbing alcohol before I get the vapors and fumes to my head and we shall continue. So nothing really that impressive about this box or packaging or content. There's a warranty certificate, the foam protective bag thingy, the the phone came with and yeah it should contain other things like this USB connector with a micro USB uh, port pretty nice it's not the mini version so that's a plus well, for 2015 or whatever and that's about it. There's a booklet here. Just sufficient enough to let you know what you get. Some sort of um, key. Installing Bitdefender on Android. That's, well, that's good, I guess. Let's just put these things away because they're written in Romanian and uh, alas, you don't really, I don't really think you care for them nor do you understand the writing. 
so this was the battery at any rate um, the charger I still own it but I use it for different devices so that's why this thing is not in the packaging so this is the box let me just put it here so you can see it and let's talk some more about the phone so right off the bat you can see the mediocre construction it was cheap to buy because it was cheap to build plastic all the way with a bit of a flex effect not too bad but something to notice and I don't know it's a mild inconvenience the back plate however I do like it has this kind of matte finish a double of or triple coating of paint I don't know if you can see it and it was supposed to be a bit of self-healing deal so if you scratch it lightly like so with your nails or with your key in your pocket it would theoretically um, I don't know cover itself cover the defect and it seems to be working quite nicely also actually I do like the branding so all view doesn't really sound like a Chinese knockoff of some sort of Western company and the logo is nice as well minimalistic sort of like a dystopian video game portal type of thing so you know but anyway I'm ranting on let's just open the device again in terms of build quality I must mention again that the screen itself is covered in plastic not glass listen to that it's the nastiest sound I could ever imagine even my pocket PCs from way back in 2004 don't sound that bad when you hit the screen so anyway I'm going to get a cable and start charging it so performance is bad there's no other word for it it's a it's difficult for the device even to run its own animations and sub menus never mind multitasking it has a MediaTek MT6572 chipset running on 28 nanometer technology with a dual core 1 gigahertz Cortex A7 CPU a Mali 400 GPU 8 gigs of internal memory with 1 gigabyte of RAM it also has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, an 8 megapixel shooter at the back with a tandem VGA cam on the at the front. Battery is a removable 1400 milliamp hour unit, but I guess it's not even important enough to mention since you will not be burning juice with this platform. At least it's stable enough to keep the device working as you can see this one is well even though it's an unused device it's six years old now and the battery still has managed to jump start from zero easily enough the, the only problem was the USB port I mentioned before so looking at these specs you would think that the phone in question offered uh, the acceptable minimum of in 2015 in terms of phone features you can see them here all the options uh, problem is it didn't really work like it didn't work at all but let's just open a few standard apps to show you what I mean so the camera it didn't even register the touch second time around is a lucky charm I'll just take a quick photo of the box the phone came with see if it manages to focus now consider this it's I've set up this um, place like a mini studio yeah I'm bragging so the lighting is correct even in that side so it should theoretically produce the best darn photos it can let's just take one yeah presumably you have to push the all view um, logo to take a snap and of course I'm getting below 15% in terms of battery juice and it's 
telling me I need to uh, save my energy whatever don't save your breath as they say so as you can see even though the quality of the screen is not that great well the picture itself is less even less so so later on I will try to send this over to my phone and uh, uh, place it into the video so you can check for yourselves uh, what the camera can offer but honestly even the touch screen is well you tell it to do something it has a huge lag then it ends up doing a whole different action so even searching seems to take some time when it mentions that you need to save battery it even lags further so it's a real nuisance this phone it's also bad marketing in my opinion it was mostly designed as a phone for people of a certain advanced age and those who don't really care about features. But then why was it made as a smartphone? I mean, in theory, the strategy is sound. Entice your consumers with endless potential of the Android world, uh, the Android ecosystem, but then give them in the impression that they need to buy a more potent device. In reality, though, this phone frustrated more people than it impressed, and those consumers were just left with a bad impression of the smartphone world in general, swearing off the exciting possibility of adopting a tech-oriented existence. I truly believe it's gadgets like these that made our elders run from progress rather than embracing it. So enough messing about with this phone. I will not insist upon anything anymore. Uh, let's see what the all view button does. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> really the all view button op opens up the app drawer, drawer or whatever. There's Gmail, Google, uh, YouTube, uh, Play Store, everything in st stock Android has to offer. Um, let's see what uh, type of um, what type of uh, Android this thing uses. So it's a 5.1 Android, and you can see some other features here. So let's draw some conclusions before this thing shuts down. Does it have a collectible value or quirk factor? Well, it's not well designed, not exceptionally well built, nor is it something impressive in terms of, I don't know, quirky or unusual um, pieces of tech. It's only meant as a prop or as a toy. Maybe it has some camp value, you know, to show people how bad we had it, stuff like that. But a collector's phone, not really. It's just a piece of rubbish. And I do use that in the most delicate of ways. But before I end this clip, I would like to throw a disclaimer your way. I'm not suggesting in any way that Chinese phones are bad. In fact, they have come such a long way that I have considered purchasing one recently. The only thing that prevented this shift for me was the marketing strategy and the positioning itself, not really the quality of the device and the package as a whole. And uh, I made a whole uh, explanation in my second S20 video about what and what Chinese phones offer and what they lack for me but in general I think they're of great quality and I would not advise avoiding them or stuff like that it's just this all view this is the genesis of what Chinese made Android phones are and really it's a bad one in all fairness though before we draw a conclusion and end this clip I should mention that this thing was very cheap like I don't know in 2015 um, it cost around uh, 60 to 80 euros something like that brand new on the market so freshly launched 
uh, and still this was a big advantage because Androids were still pretty expensive back then so Android phones weren't they were mainstream but the, the level of um, market share and I don't know gaps in the market and niches and stuff like that well you can really buy an affordable and well-built well-equipped Android phone under 300 euros or 200 euros or so and when these things came out yeah sure they weren't really performance oriented or they didn't have the they didn't have the right touch in terms of I don't know reliability and ease of use but they still were they were still cheap so they had that going for them and they are responsible for bringing down the price gradually to uh, today's market really when uh, 150 euros worth of Android slab will get you an excellent and impressive package but as always thanks for watching and remember I buy mostly useless quirky obsolete tech stuff so you don't have to bye bye